Hello everyone, this is Alchemisted, and this is, once again, Star Trek Online, Rise of the Red Shirt, and this is the last, the last, the final mission in the Klingon arc, thank god, I'm done with this, I'm moving on, we're going on to bigger and better things, but, well, not so much better, more so much, uh, the Romulan arc was always kind of, eh, to me. It was always sort of like this big space where you dealt with a whole bunch of stuff that happened, but none of it really felt, there was no real cohesive connection. Hopefully that's changed. Uh, especially now that Cloaked Intentions is part of the Romulan arc, which screws around with the storyline of Cloaked Intentions a bit. Neither here nor there. But first things first. This episode is going to be a bit different. That is because this episode features something that is unique in Star Trek Online. Something that is not in any other mission in the game. And that, my friends, is a Scotsman. Aye! A Scotsman from Linlithgow, and I do hope I pronounce that right. But if you happen to be Scottish and you hear my impersonation of how you sound, and you happen to be a bit offended by it, you have my heartfelt apologies. But moving on, we're doing Night of the Comet, the grand finale to the Davidian featured episode series, which is awesome at the start and awesome at the middle and ends... annoying. But we'll get to that when we get to it. First, let's hear the briefing. Down, down, down. Night of the Comet! I like that sound. It sounds like there's going to be zombies in here. There's not. Shit. Shit! Let's see. You've already completed this mission. Yes, I know. You cannot... You cannot defeat my kung fu. All right. We've determined that the Davidians are using the triolic energy of Driffin's Comet to ease their entry into our phase variants. This is the cause of all the incidents in the neutral zone. But it's worse than that. It's possible that, given the amount of triolic and temporal energy in that comet, that the Davidians will be able to destabilize the area of space surrounding the comet enough that they will pull it and everything in it into their phase variants. In essence, they're trying to steal an entire sector. The resulting effects of the surrounding space would make the destruction of Romulus look like the popping of a party favor. Uh, now I'm thinking of party favors. The only thing we can do to stop it is destroy the comet before the Davidians can use it. It's not enough to do it in the present, because the Davidians would still have access to the 23rd century when the comet moves past Rosanna Station. We have to destroy it there. You'll need your ship this time, so you can't use the Davidian portal on the station. I can help you get to the past, but you'll need to follow my instructions precisely. Good luck. And as a reward for this mission, you get to choose one of these! The Federation Type 3 Phaser Rifle, a Federation Type 2 Phaser, and a Klingon Disruptor Pistol, which I am unsure but maybe better than the Type 2 Phaser. 97 DPS? 92? Yes, it's, it's better than the Phaser. <laughs> of course it is. Anyways. But yeah, the Phaser Rifle's sweet. This is a good rifle. This is a really good rifle. Uh, it actually hits twice. The first hit is the actual beam, and then the person explodes. Um, and uh, it actually has an air... The Anadion Burst secondary fire actually has an area of effect, so you can knock... So it's actually a good means of crowd control. You uh, Nadion Burst somebody in the middle of a group that's running towards you, and they all fall on their ass, and then you photon grenade them. You do what I do with the grenade satchel, and you just go, Grenade! Photon grenade! Plasma grenade! Smoke grenade! Flash grenade! Fuck every grenade! You just grenade the shit out of them, and you can take out a group fairly easily um, at low levels. Which is good, because at because now this is in the mission progression at the low levels. It's in the middle of the Klingon arc. So uh, you're probably going to uh, be able to do stuff like that. It it's kind of stops working by the time you hit Commander. Um, but yeah, uh, damn good weapons. Federation Type 2 Phaser, eh, it's alright. Uh, Klingon Disruptor Pistol, I want to try this one out. I want to check this one out. Because this one looks like it says it hits harder, slightly harder, than the Type 2 Phaser, so... I want to check that one out. I... I'm, I'm looking for a decent pistol weapon, you know. Decent pistol weapon. There aren't any in this game. Let's see, uh, still won't hit as hard as the Type 2 hand phaser, though. Which I suppose should make sense. But then again, not much is going to be making sense by the end of this mission. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to leave ship interior.
Follow my instructions exactly, he says. Whatever. No K7 operations. No K7 operation. No, no! I don't want to dock right now. I can't dock right now. I have things to do. That sounded really wrong. Coffee. Too much cream in it. Ah! Oh, damn, I'm going to be bouncing off the walls. So, uh, you are not my primary, though. You need to be my primary. When you accept a mission, it's really annoying. It should, like, go up to your, as your primary. Go to Bepi-113 system. It's over there. So, there is a transwarp button that is being added to the game. Whoa, Carrot. Carrot's always a clusterfuck. Um... There is a transport button that's being added to the game that allows you to instantly go to where the system where your next mission takes place. And if you're in that sector block, perhaps it'll take you in system as well. This is something that I've, uh, that I think I read on the patch notes on the triple server. It would be nice. It would be nice to not have to trek across the, uh, across the sector blocks. But then again, uh, Not much goes on in the sector blocks, or at least you're, you're missing out on some social interaction if you just skip out the sector blocks. Cause I remember, especially once free-to-play launches, the sector blocks are... blocks? <laughs> the sector blocks are probably going to be full of conversation, because I remember when this game first came out, there was a lot. And then it just died. The game became almost deathly quiet. Nobody talked to each other in the sector blocks. You know, like, people are using, like, the Red Alert chat channel uh, for, like, conversation and such. For, like, idle conversation that should be in the sector blocks, or at least the local channel. But, uh, yeah, nobody uses zone chat. It's kind of sad. Those who use the zone chat often go ignored. Bepi-113 system redacted. Something cool happens here. And in the Tribble server, your cloak... You're, you're going to have, like, a disguise for this mission, but it didn't engage till after this. I hope that's true, because I want to do this as a galaxy class. I don't want to do this as some Klingon... Looking like some Klingon flea-written shit. I want to do this with the Waglinde. I want to I want to do this with a galaxy class, because it's fucking awesome. Incoming hail, Captain. You want me to put it on the main view screen? On screen. You should feel privileged. Very few people ever get to see this system. My organization has gone to a lot of trouble to keep it off the navigational charts. The star is ideal for what starship pilots call a slingshot. Section 31 uses it from time to time to deal with problems that take a more creative approach to solve. Your best chance of getting back to the point in time where you need to be is to use the star's gravity to accelerate your ship to such a high speed that you will be able to access the time continuum. I've taken the liberty of having the light speed breakaway calculations added to your ship's database. You will need to hit a series of points as you move around the star. After you make your approach, you should see a navigational beacon. Aim for it, and you will have the correct trajectory for the slingshot. This is a tricky maneuver. If you don't hit each point in the correct order and time, it won't work. I hope your helm officer is up to the task. I am, I am. He raises his hand, supposedly. One more thing before you start. I also added a hollow emitter to your vessel. You will appear to be a Klingon D7 with the appropriate access codes for the time period, but still have access to all of the 25th century firepower you will need to deal with the comet. Don't alter the timeline any more than you have to. Destroy the comet and stop the Davidians. But other than that, try to stay out of trouble. I'd wish you luck, but I have a feeling you wouldn't think I was being sincere. We're ready to engage the holometer and start a run around the star at your command, Captain. I don't want to do this as a Katinga. Good. Good. I want to do this as a galaxy because this is fucking awesome. 
So when I first did this, I kept trying to do it because I use I fly my ship with WASD, and you've probably seen it being a little jerky sometimes. That's why. And I kept trying to do this with WASD, and I couldn't fucking do it. I couldn't fucking do it, Captain. That was terrible. Sorry. Uh, I couldn't fucking get it to work. I was like, what the fuck, man? I can't get this to work. So eventually I tried... I decided to try using the mouse, and the mouse uh, was fluid enough to keep the ship on track throughout all of these rings. So when you're going through here, keep that in mind. Don't use the WASD keys. Use the mouse. The mouse will make it so much easier to get through here. All right. This, before I attempt this, this was introduced in uh, the original series, and I'm unsure which episode it was. Was it Tomorrow is Yesterday? Was that the one where they go back in time? There's like an Air Force pilot who gets beamed aboard the Enterprise. Uh, this was from the original series, but uh, it was used even... Uh, what's the right word for that? Well, it was used more notably in um, Star Trek IV, The Final Frontier. Not the Final Frontier. The Final Frontier is the one that sucks. Uh, the Voyage Home, where they travel back in time to save the whales. No, I'm not joking. To save the whales so they can travel back forward in time and save Earth from an alien probe that's killing everything. I am So the whales can literally talk to it and tell it to go away. I wish I was kidding. How do you get more 80s than a starship full of whales? You can't do that. The only way you could be more 80s than a starship full of whales is having a ship flown by dolphins, and I'm already flying one of those around. You didn't know that shit, did you? You didn't know that the Enterprise-D had fucking dolphins in it helping to fly the ship. <laughs> yeah, alright. Let's put these dolphins to work. So you fly through these rungs, and each rung accelerates you. It's kind of like playing the, uh... It's kind of like playing the asteroid level in Star Fox and trying to get to the black hole, almost. And you're gonna go faster and faster, and un unless you're using the mouse, using the WASD keys, unless you have really, really fucking great turn rate, you're not gonna be able to do it. And even if you do have a fucking great turn rate, it's very easy to go bouncing into the star. We don't want to do that. Emergency power to engines. Let's rock and roll. Slowly. I'm approaching this with trepidation because I don't want to fuck it up. Hello, Gatotsu. Stop distracting me, Gatotsu. Daddy's got work to do. Here we go. Here we go. I'm gonna fuck with this timeline so bad. Here we go. Uh... Oh, son of a bitch! Son of a shit. Start up for another pass. I think I do need to be going full impulse, because then I will have all po full power to engines, and then I will have a better turn rate. Here we go. Ready, set, Jesus! I'm not, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Helm officer, wake up. So try your best to stay on the inside. Here we go. There we go. Yeah, I needed full power to engines. I'm satisfied. I did it with I did the slingshot maneuver with a galaxy class starship. Like I said, this mission begins awesome.
And that is actually fun once you know once you know how you can do it, not fuck up. Oh god, I look like a Klingon flea trap. Captain, based on the decay of elements in this system, we have arrived approximately 150 years in the past, somewhere around the Earth year 2265. Sir, incoming hail. It's from a Constitution-class starship, identifying itself as the USS Reuben James. Putting it on screen now. Attention, unidentified ship. I am Commodore Jacob Ross, in command of the USS Reuben James. We have been searching for a Klingon vessel reported to have attacked a colony in the Gleese system. You fit the description of the ship we are looking for. Oh, fuck! Thank you, Drake! Jesus Christ! Unless you can prove that you are not, we will take immediate action. Captain, the Reuben James has closed the channel. They are not responding to hails and weapons are charging. We cannot seriously damage Commodore Ross's ship without risking damage to the timeline, but we must defend ourselves and complete our mission. Recommend we fight to disable. Got it. Thanks, Drake, you son of a bitch. Yeah, 23rd century ship shields, withstanding 25th century artillery. Something doesn't make sense here. And oh, this is just the beginning for this mission. Hello, that was jarring. And there is Drozana Station back in its heyday. Looks quite a bit prettier than it does now. And there's the comet. Yes, there's the comet. There's the comet. To any ships in range, please, we need help. I don't know what these things are, but they're all over the station. They're killing people. Please, you have to help us. Captain, the comet approaching the station is... Eh. Yeah, no, I didn't flub that. There was no is in there. Grammar! Come on, man! Captain, the comet is approaching the station. Its trailic energy is making it easier for the Davidians to manifest. The people on that station don't have any way to fight them. We'll have to help, or they'll all die. Can I kill the comet right fucking now, though? No, I can't. Damn it! Oh, so the comet didn't have anything to do with the debris field. Aw. I was th feeling clever for a moment there. Shit. And there's the uh, little flash to remind you that this is a hologram. Thanks a lot, Drake. What the hell? You're telling me that big bad Franklin Drake of the clandestine secret government didn't do his research? Bullshit. You knew exactly what was going to happen when you sent me here. You sent me here to die, didn't you? That's my that's my opinion. That's my theory for all of this is Franklin Drake sent you here to die because you knew too much. And uh, we're going to go with the standard hazard team here because it's the grand finale and I guess Pran should be in on it. He's been sleeping the whole rest of the time. Coffee. I need the coffee. Alright, come on, load. Jesus, it's like a triple test server. Captain, I'm reading multiple Davidian life signs. We will need to work quickly to clear the station of their presence. Alright. Oh shit. Density beam rifle, Polaron blast assault. You know what, eight? I am going to give you Locke's anti-proton rifle for a moment and see how effective that is. Kind of a 
this is just a theory I want to test. Is this a little bit more effective against them? Okay, you can carry eights. Phaser rifle, shotgun. All right. So this next area is full of people. Jesus Christ, Chug. Sir, I don't think anyone here has appreciated the Davidians crashing their party. I'm detecting weapons fire, broken glass, and signs of a struggle. It's a bar fight, sir, and we'll need to quell it if we want any chance at stopping the Davidians. The Temporal Prime Directive is in, f in effect, sir. Recommend we set all weapons to stun to minimize possible damage to the timeline. My life sucked out. By who? You. This room has been pacified. He's got a knife. He's got really he's got really curved knives for some reason. Tetrion split beam rifle. What the hell is that doing in the twenty third century? Gotcha. Yeah, kicking the ghost didn't do anything. Synthale, I have booze. <laughs> 